Mr. Sitsanovich, can you please get the toilet paper from the back? Thank you. Every day it's the same thing. Coronavirus. 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 Krise. Epidemie. Corona epidemie. Virus. Pandemie. Katastrophenfall. This Corona coronavirus is spreading ever faster in Germany. With the virus comes the fear. News reports and images like these are unsettling. Restrictions on movement, shuttered stores. What effect is it having on us? Sorry, but everybody needs toilet paper. You're all buying multiple packs. The health system put to the test. A suspected corona case. Families struggling to balance childcare and working from home. I'm wiped out. Not far from the seat of the German government, life has been turned upside down. Here, look, bananas. I mean, we're well supplied. Those are leftovers. There's enough for everyone. There's really no need to panic. No need to panic, no shortages. Supermarket manager Michael Lind says these words like incantations. The shelves aren't empty because there are no goods to be had. It's because he wasn't prepared for the sudden spate of panic buying. Lind has been permanently stressed for days. In these times of the virus, he's even helping to stack shelves to get things under control again. We're going to make adjustments ourselves, too. I told my staff today that we have to react day by day, and unfortunately, I don't... Um, hold on a second. Sorry, but everybody needs toilet paper. You three are buying multiple packs. I get new stock two or three times a week, you know. It's not a problem. Older people need toilet paper, too. You don't have to overreact. Thanks very much. Mr. Lind, you're absolutely right. These are crazy times. Crazy times call for new rules, even for customers at the supermarket. I can only let you have one. Oh, I'm sorry. Flour, pasta, and canned goods can also only be bought in normal household amounts. Despite the stress, Michael Lind is keen to do an interview for the local news. We're not standing here because I'm hungry for fame. It's simply about getting the message across. Everybody calm down, everything is fine, don't get worked up. We're not going to starve here. We're really well set up and like I say, it would be a big help to us if people would just settle down again. The report is meant to help curb panic buying. But Lint still doesn't know what's coming his way. Little by little, the government is about to shut down public life. State and federal governments are putting further drastic restrictions on public life. These are measures our country has never seen before. We're in an emergency situation, a crisis scenario. There will be restrictions. Every family will feel the effects. From today, schools and kindergartens across Germany are closed. More drastic changes for Berlin's residents. Among those affected is the Wilke family. I've got a chair ready for you. Let's get you set up. Maybe pull your sleeves up so they don't get wet. Sebastian is a credit specialist at a bank. He was supposed to be at his desk by now, but work will have to wait. His young son is taking a nap, and he's using the time to cook with his daughter. Since the kindergarten closed, he's been looking after the kids and trying to work from home. Look, can you get those three crumbs? You can't? Then I'll do it. From one day to the next, it gets a bit much. On the other hand, you can handle it regardless. But the question is, at what point does being at home really start to get on your nerves? The mood is still good, even though he wanted to be at his desk long before now. But his wife isn't yet here to relieve him. He's hoping she'll come soon, because he hasn't got much work done. Oh, I hear the door. Who could that be? Hello. 
Anna is a doctor. She's just finished a shift at her practice. First, the work clothes go into the wash to stop the virus from entering the apartment. After that, she showers. Only then does she properly greet the family. I'm wiped out. There's so much going through your head at once. And then you rush back because you never quite know. He has to start work quickly, and I never know what's waiting for me here. It's chaos in here. For now, everything is left as it is. The children want to play, and Dad can finally get to work. Go, earn some money. Sebastian hopes he'll be able to get some things out of the way before dinner. If not, he'll have to go back to work once the children are in bed, if he has any energy by then. Anna is still dealing with work emails. Uh, somehow I have 25,000 messages right now, so I'm trying to read a little while we play. They're holding things together for now, but the family needs a break from our filming. Meanwhile, outside, everything seems normal. People are enjoying the sun. There's still no sign of social distancing. At the same time, measures to combat the corona pandemic are picking up speed. Shops are threatened with closure. And for florist Dirk Weyer, that would threaten his livelihood. Yeah, hello. Media reports say government is suggesting closing stores. Wow. His business partner and team have also heard about it. They want to know what's going to happen. Any news about reduced hours compensation? Yes, it has to be applied for. Here it says it can be applied for at the end of the month, and employees can even be reduced to zero. Then you get 65% refunded. But only if you're forced to close, right? But Dirk Weyer still doesn't know if and when the closures will take effect and whether flower shops are included. His mother is worried. There's never been anything like this. In the context of so many closures, none of us has ever experienced that. I don't think it's happened since the war. It's definitely an existential threat. That's clear. The main thing is to take immediate action to maintain liquidity. My people have to be paid. Rents and other costs have to be covered. A perilous situation, but right now, Dirk Weyer has flowers to sell. Business has to keep going, at least for the moment. Okay. On the 18th of March, the German Chancellor addresses the nation. Let me say this, it's serious. You should take it seriously too. Don't say, I'm young and strong, it won't affect me. There's no need to stockpile groceries. In Germany, more and more grocery stores are equipping themselves to protect customers and staff from the coronavirus. The next day, we're back at the supermarket. It's been two days since we last filmed here. All staff to the break room, please. A team meeting. Manager Michael Lind reacts to the developments. We're going to get used to not being so close together. No, really. We're going to learn different habits. We don't do that anymore, Mrs. Kraus. Keep a distance. Here, too. At least a little bit. I feel a responsibility to somehow do something, to try to protect you somehow. Keep a distance, and not just from the customers. There should also be masks. Of course, now there's another problem. Yesterday, I spent three hours trying to order masks. You can't get them. And if you can, then you get a packet like this for 49 euros. How long is that supposed to last? If necessary, the employees are to wear scarves over their mouths. 
Lint also voices support for the rules recommended by virologists and politicians. Also, I really ask you to avoid private social contact. These huge congregations of people will have consequences. It's a disaster. These are some big changes for your colleagues. Yes, for everyone. For me too. But we've been talking about this for days. And if we don't do it, if we wait and wait, I just want it to be over. I'm sick of it. I don't understand people. I can't comprehend how somebody can be so selfish to just enjoy the springtime outside while we're here sweating over this and going to bed with stomach ulcers. So we all need to finally wake up a bit. I have to take a drink. <laughs> a few days after Chancellor Merkel's speech, people are keeping their distance in public. But there's little chance of that in the Vilka family's apartment. Sebastian is supposed to be preparing for an important telephone conference. So. Pass mal auf, ich gebe dir mal ein Spiel. Okay? Ihr könnt, ihr könnt mal Zielwerfen machen. <coughs> First the technology wasn't working, now the children are bored. Pass mal auf. Stand or sit here, and then try to throw into the bucket, okay? And see how many you get. No, we can't do that now. Hey, please listen to me. I have to do some work. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Hmm. Okay, now I've just got an email from the kindergarten saying that one of the employees has tested positive. The children, a work appointment any moment, and now Corona? It's a bit too much all at once. Um, I have to read the rest of this quickly. I only read the first sentence. The message has consequences that the children are blissfully unaware of. Nothing certain right now. But he can't deal with it right now. The telephone conference has already started. Luckily, his wife Anna comes home from work soon afterwards. I built something. We have cheese noodles. Beautiful. Six hours work at the medical practice and kids with cabin fever, but one topic rises above everything else. Have you read the email? You mean the one from Haida? Yeah. I haven't read it, I just saw the subject line. Yeah. Do you know anything more? Have you had any thoughts about it? Suddenly it's clear the virus has come very close to the family. The question is, how close? Were the children infected or not? Because if they were, then we'd have it too, guaranteed. Definitely, yes. That would mean Anna couldn't keep working as a doctor, even though she's urgently needed right now. She plans to get tested the next day. In Germany, the number of corona infections has risen sharply. The developments are not good. We're all in a crisis with a magnitude I could never have imagined. We all have to be aware that the fight against the virus is a marathon. A new day begins, one that will bring more immense changes for the German capital's residents. This is where the distribution of corona patients in Berlin is being coordinated. The capital has around 600 intensive care beds with ventilators. More than half of them are currently occupied by patients with other conditions, like here at the Hafelhöhe Hospital. Senior doctor Axel Strupat is checking the condition of an older patient. He's one of eight patients in intensive care here. Only two of them are suspected of having the coronavirus. That's about to change. The biggest worry is really that we could see the proportions we hear about in Italy, France and Spain. Then there would be situations where one has to decide, 
Who does one even try to save? I think everyone is afraid of that situation. This patient is stable. Now it's time to focus on preparing for corona patients. Axel Struppert has to make sure that everyone on his team knows the procedures. We now have to change that in our emergency management plan. Everyone has to be on the same page when corona patients are brought in. So far, they've only seen one confirmed case. While Struppert updates the emergency management plan, a call suddenly comes through from another station. Okay, and there's suspicion of corona or what? He suspects that? Okay, he'll go on the fifth floor. Does it make sense if we come down with one of our beds? You can't... Okay, it doesn't matter. Or does it? I don't know. The procedures have been talked through, but they're not yet routine. Good morning, how's it looking? Dirk Weyer's routine is suddenly interrupted. At 7 o'clock, he's standing with his neighbor outside his store. Today, Berlin has enacted a further measure in the fight against corona. Retailers are supposed to close. Despite everything, the question is, when will it take effect? When do I have to close? After it's been pronounced? My neighbor says I'm not allowed to open. What now? What's legally binding? It's complicated. Bayer believes the order isn't yet official. If the shop has to close immediately, he won't be able to sell anything. A huge financial loss looms. The flowers will wither. So he simply opens up. Then comes good news, at least for today. My neighbor just told me that the department store nearby is open today and closes from tomorrow onwards. So I still have one trading day to sell off goods and prevent further losses. A week has gone by since we began filming. A curfew is still a possibility. State and federal governments have agreed to wide-ranging measures to curb the spread of coronavirus. We will strictly enforce these measures and severely penalize infringements. Police say many people stayed home this weekend or practiced social distancing while shopping. But the number of infections continues to rise. A soundtrack for the crisis. The normally lively streets feel empty even during the day. Many stay home. Including the Wilke family. One of the children's teachers has tested positive for coronavirus. So the kids have to be quarantined. Are you helping with the chores? From now on, the family take over filming duties themselves. The mother, Anna, a doctor, is urgently needed at work. She's organized to be tested. She explains the situation to her children. They said that one of the teachers was sick, and now all the kids who were at the kindergarten up until the 13th, the week before last, have to stay at home for two weeks. And that includes you. That means you've already finished the first week. Now it's just until this Friday, OK? So just until Friday, we're not allowed to go out. We have to see if you get sick, and parents can decide for themselves. I know it's hard, huh? So they stay in the apartment. They're not even allowed into their courtyard. Running around has to happen indoors. The message of the day is persevere. It's quarantine, at least until the test results. They're not happy about it. I'd like it better if we were outside. 
Oh, really? I thought you were enjoying all the things we were doing inside, like sport and crafts and makeup. That's good too, but I find it a bit silly because going outside and going for walks is lovely, and when we're not allowed, then it's sad. And actually, we're allowed to decide about our own bodies ourselves. They try to maintain some kind of normality so they don't get cabin fever. Those who are allowed outside abide by the new social distancing rules. The number of infections keeps rising. And that's something senior doctor Axel Strupat is well aware of. A patient with a suspected coronavirus infection is about to arrive. After the gown, the doctor needs a hood, gloves, mask, and safety glasses. That's the policy. In this particular case, it's a patient with a suspected infection. So he's being taken to the secure room with a double door. The point is above all to protect ourselves so that we potentially don't get infected. So far, there's only been one confirmed case here. That means there's no routine yet. If you follow the current directions, the protective gear we have should be fine. Of course, there's always a certain risk. The patient has serious underlying health conditions. His lung function is strongly impaired. Are you getting enough air? He's already out of it. They want to save the patient, but still have to comply with strict regulations. Does everyone have a mask on? Even though time is of the essence, the procedures have to be followed. So Axel Strupat has to briefly leave the room. There were mistakes in following the procedures. It just happened to me, and no one noticed. At some point, I realized I didn't have my protective glasses on when I went into the room. For the next time, we should internally discuss how to hand over such patients in a more precise way, so everyone is ready with their protective gear and nothing gets forgotten. For now, the patient is stable. Later, the confirmation arrives. No corona infection. But Axel Struppert has to prepare for many corona-infected patients. In an emergency, the hospital could activate an extra 20 ventilators. The doctor hopes that will be enough, and that he won't ever have to decide whose life he can save and whose he cannot. Back at the supermarket, manager Michael Lind is determined to protect his staff and keep the customers waiting in line from getting too close to each other. It's not like I'm worried about dying. I worry about what I would cause if I got sick. I could infect colleagues. I might have to close my store. I just don't know. For now, he'll keep improvising. You can use this to exchange cash. Basically, you can hold it or set it down. The customer throws the money in, you put the change in and hand it back. Okay. Necessity is the mother of invention. Lind wants to protect his staff as best as he can. For every register, he's devised a sneeze guard. He tried to source plexiglass from a hardware store without success. But clothes racks and cling wrap should do the job. So that's 88 euros and 4 cents. On the front lines of the crisis. The workers here are suddenly a vital part of the response to the virus, and a few customers are expressing their appreciation. We have to quickly show you a good example. To everyone who works here, thank you that the shop is open, that you're holding fast through the craziness, and for your patience and your courage. Stay healthy and happy from your neighbors. That really tugs at the heart. Beautiful. Florist Dirk Weyer is also doing okay. He has to close his store and figure out what to do with his new shipment of fresh flowers. 
But he and a co-worker have set up a stall in a nearby square. And in order to get rid of as many flowers as possible, they're offering special deals. Before we throw them away, of course we add an extra bunch and give people a good price to get rid of as many as possible. Nothing is worse than throwing them away. That's just senseless. So far, business is better than expected. At least the restrictions on going out have a small positive side effect for Dirk Weyer. People were really, really keen to have something beautiful for their home, to make their home really nice. They bought plants to put on the balcony or the terrace or whatever they might have. It's lovely. You need a little something to lift your mood. It's the end of day four of the ban on close social contact. Germany's Robert Koch Institute says it can't yet say how effective the imposed regulations will be in combating coronavirus. We already have many infected people in Germany and we're mourning many deaths. But this is the calm before the storm. The Minister of Agriculture has again called on people not to panic buy because of the crisis. Back in the supermarket with manager Michael Lind. He's been open for half an hour already. Today, there's no sign of the kind of panic buying of recent days. It's because we're not letting so many in. Lint has had to resort to exceptional measures. He's hired security. Now, only 20 customers can be in the store at one time. So Lint can now focus on other things. For instance, together with other traders, 20,000 euros have been collected for a local food bank. This will help provide groceries to those in need during the pandemic. He wants to be there when it's handed over. It's like a ghost town. Look up there at the train. Empty. I must say that looks really positive. I was upset a few days ago. Now I have to say I get the impression the message is getting through to people. Some other traders convinced Lind to take part. The truck with the groceries is about to arrive. Ah, that truck. Yes, this is looking good. Here we go. Look, I'm smiling again. Yes. Let's get it open. That's really cool, a full truck. And the food bank will distribute them to those in need. You're good now. You somehow get the feeling now that you did something good. We all did the right thing. I think that's cool. It's really fun and it's suddenly taken your mind off everything. We'll all come back in a minute when we get back in the car, but right now, you have to say, helping makes things better. So Michael Lind has found a way to deal with the stress. Such willingness to help might not beat the virus, but it will help make life more bearable during the crisis. No one knows when the virus will disappear, but it certainly will change society, perhaps even a bit for the better.